U.S. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump went head-to-head -head in Atlanta for the opening presidential debate of 2024. This is the first time a sitting and former president have debated, and the highly anticipated face-off was a historic clash of personality and policy. This was the first of two such debates, giving both candidates a chance to move the needle in what has been a tight race for the White House. With five months until Election Day, this meeting was the earliest presidential debate in U.S. history. To me, that was just daylight and darkness. I'm a little old-fashioned. Um, I care about substance. I care about policy. I care about facts. Um, I care about people being accountable uh, to their lives. What I saw tonight was Donald Trump uh, weakness masquerading as strength. A guy who was incapable, as the senator said, answering any question directly, uh, obfuscating, pointing fingers, and more important than anything else, disgusted by the fact that I heard ex-president United States talk down the American economy, talk down the United States of America to the degree he did tonight. Sir, what about uh, the president's As performance? it relates to the president on the substance, on the compare and contrast and economic record, we're just in the last three and a half years, that 15.6 million jobs represents eight times more jobs than the last three Republican presidents combined. A 3% GDP growth, envy of the world, where we're seeing inflation tamed down two thirds, an economic policy and a vision for the future to bring back American uh, manufacturing. I was very proud of the president tonight. So from my humble perspective, uh, this is not about you know, style. This is about delivering results for the American people. And tonight, I think Joe Biden not only asserted himself, he reminded people of his accomplishments and his vision for the future. Joe Biden didn't look like a man who was in command of the country or the facts or his own campaign or the debate. And like, this is after Joe Biden retreated to a log cabin in the woods for a week to get constantly drilled. Meanwhile, President Trump was out on the road campaigning in swing states, carrying his message directly to the voters. America deserves an energetic president. We get that in President Trump. And with President Biden, it's more like a silver alert than an energetic president. I think the uh, debate last night, the reverberations for that will continue. And I think it will have a big effect on our ability to fix the country. Why? Because I think that this will help ensure that Donald Trump is elected president in November, that we take back the majority in the Senate for the Republican Party, and that we grow the House majority for Republicans here. I would be panicking, too, if I were a Democrat today, and that was my nominee. I think they know they have a serious problem, but it's not just political. It's not just the Democratic Party. It's the entire country. We have a serious problem here because we have a president who by all appearances, is not up to the task. And these are very dangerous times. This is a very serious moment in American history, and it needs to be regarded and handled as such. Compared to a person who was lying the whole time, we saw integrity on one side and dishonesty on the other. That's how I saw it. And what do you say to former President Trump, who blames you for January 6th and says you well, didn't take his fool. offer he's a fool. for the National Guard? That, he thinks I planned my own assassination. He's sicker than I thought. 70% of the American public say they don't want this contest because neither of them, <laughs> neither of them are running on the things that are absolutely critical to Americans right now. The only thing they have, the only argument they have is be scared of that other guy. He's a felon, he's a bad guy, he's gonna destroy the Republic. They're running on fear. I think. Last night, the American people saw what a lot of us have been seeing, those of us who follow politics closely, is that the president's just not capable. We have seven months remaining in this term. It's a dangerous world. I don't believe that the president um, that we saw last night is capable of exercising the duties as commander in chief. I think most people, if they're being honest, would agree. And I think, therefore, we should call on the executive branch to do that. And obviously, the vice president has to act. You know, uh, without passing a law that, you know, creates some other body, right, under the Section 4 of the 25th Amendment, which we're not going to be able to do timely. It's going to take the Vice President um, to exercise her powers and call forth the Cabinet to do it. And so I intend to put forth a resolution um, calling on her to do so.